Living longer. Living healthier. Living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. COVID-19 hit nursing homes especially hard. In fact, one in every 10 COVID-related deaths happened in a nursing home or long-term care facility. With nursing homes accepting visitors again and so much returning to normal, how can we protect this vulnerable population? Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. I'm your host, Beth Brown, and today we're talking about infection prevention in long-term care and what residents and visitors can do to protect themselves and one another. Stay with us. Welcome back to Healthy Living for Life. Joining us today is our very own Mountain Pacific Quality Health Project First Line Senior Account Manager, Crystal Morse. And also joining us is Account Manager, also from Mountain Pacific Quality Health, Jesse Kinsey. And thanks so much to you both for being with us this morning. So Crystal, well, let's dive in. Oh, absolutely, it's our pleasure. <laughs> and this is gonna be great information for um, all of us to learn about. So Crystal, let's start with you. Since the start of COVID-19, we've heard a lot about infection prevention in that term and in all kinds of healthcare settings. What are we really talking about there? Well, Beth, I'm going to go sort of a step further and, and call it infection prevention and control. So that refers to preventing or stopping the spread of infections during the delivery of health care. So like in long term care, infection control strategies include vaccination, masking, distancing, hand hygiene, source control, and then isolating if the resident is COVID-19 positive. Okay, and you mentioned source control. What does that mean? Source control simply refers to wearing a mask um, that covers your nose and your mouth. This pre prevents respiratory droplets from um, expelling when you're breathing, talking, sneezing, or coughing. And we have, of course, heard over and over again that infection prevention and infection control are so important for protecting people in the public and in healthcare settings. Why are folks in long term care healthcare settings so vulnerable? Well, older adults that live in congregate or communal settings are at higher risk of being infected by the respiratory pathogens, such as SARS CoV 2 or influenza. So frequent contact with residents and staff, um, residents sharing a room, gathering for meals, and of course doing activities together uh, puts them at high risk. And then the other factor is employees that work in multiple healthcare settings also increase, increase, increase the likelihood of transmitting disease. Okay, and we know that getting older can also play a role. So can you talk to us a little bit about why the aging community is more susceptible to infection? Sure. Certain health conditions like heart disease, COPD, cancer, or, or being immunocompromised immuno may cause immune, immune system to grow weaker with age. So definitely these conditions make it harder for older adults to fight infections. And we've heard about infection prevention and control a lot since COVID-19, but was this an issue before the pandemic? Oh, yes. Yes. Nursing homes have always been at risk for uh, a high risk for uh, risk populations. So, again, going back to the congregate nature. Um, so before COVID-19, we were concerned every flu season that the virus might spread through a nursing house home. So going back to uh, the why behind it and the vaccination rates are a must. So Crystal, what would you say has been some of the biggest challenges that long-term care facilities have had to face during the pandemic? Well, you know, changing of the federal regulations have and having to adjust to pra different practices. Uh, the P initially, the PPE supply was scarce. And then of course, you know, we've all heard of the great resignation and staffing shortages. So, and then we're still battling the vaccine hesitancy. Sure. And what infections are most commonly found in long-term care facilities? Obviously, we're talking about um, COVID a lot today, but are there other infections that are common? There are. So the most common infections is pneumonia, urinary tract infections, skin infections, 
Uh, common outbreaks in, can occur in long-term care, such as norovirus and influenza and now COVID-19. Okay, so I have one more question for you, Crystal, and then we'll get over to Jesse. But what are some of the most important steps that residents and staff, too, can take to make sure they're safe during long-term care? Uh, nursing homes have done a wonderful job of screening staff and residents for Ill any kind of illness, really, but uh, heightened has been COVID-19. Of course, wearing PPE correctly, uh, we've really heightened our environmental cleaning and service areas, and then proper ventilation and airflow have been adjusted and upgraded in nursing homes. And of course, going back to that source control, wearing your mask, and most importantly is hand hygiene, washing those hands. All right, those are great tips. Thanks, Crystal. So Jesse, let's switch over to you and talk about vaccinations. Crystal mentioned vaccinations being a big part of infection prevention, but it seems like a lot of people don't see the importance of them as much as we did at the start of the pandemic. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure, sure, great question. So vaccinations are, are really just as important today as they were at the beginning of the pandemic. And really they're a lot more widely available than they were early on. And they're safe, they're effective. And as barely a few weeks ago, we had hit the milestone of over 600 million doses of COVID-19 being administered in the US alone. And really the vaccines they're, that are available today, they're designed to help prevent severe illness hospitalizations and death and they're really continuing to do that and um you know COVID-19 boosters they they're they continue to demonstrate that they help to strengthen protection um that may have decreased over time and uh, you know there was actually just a study by Yale released last month that is is proving that vaccines are continuing to work even though we have some sub variants that are that are circulating and um, you know they're doing the job they're reducing hospitalizations and that's that's truly you know what they were designed to do and that importance never really went away okay perfect um, we're coming up on a break here Jesse. we have about 20 seconds left can you tell us really quick who should get vaccinated yeah okay so really everyone six months of age or older is now eligible to get a COVID-19 vaccine and for maximum protection uh, everyone should really take a look and see if they're up to date for what they're eligible for perfect thank you Jesse thanks Crystal we do need to pause here for a quick break but when we come back we're going to talk about what can long-term care residents and their loved ones do to keep one another safe we'll find out stay with us we'll be right back after these messages Welcome back. We're still talking with Jesse Kinsey and Crystal Morris from Mountain Pacific Quality Health. And thanks for sticking with us to talk to us more about long-term care and infection prevention. And Crystal, I'm gonna start with you again. Let's talk a little bit about how we can keep residents safe. So we know there have been lots of fears and unknowns with COVID and putting people into long-term care can maybe be a little bit scary or people can be hesitant about that. Why do you think people are still feeling that way this far into the pandemic? Pandemic. Well, as we know, during the pandemic, family members were not allowed to visit their loved ones in nursing homes. So residents and families suffered by this, and many of them, many of the residents showed signs of depression, weight loss, and social isolation. So long-term care facilities really have done a, a great job in, in improving ways to protect residents and staff since then. So if you're considering moving your loved one into long-term care, I really encourage families to be involved in their care by learning about infection control practices, such as proper hand hygiene and wearing PPE correctly. For sure, and we know those nursing home folks have been working so hard to keep their residents safe. Jesse, let's go to you. Despite all those efforts that nursing homes are trying to do right now for their residents and for themselves, do you think people should maybe wait until we get the all clear that maybe this pandemic is officially over before they put a loved one in a nursing home or some sort of long-term care facility? 
Very good question. And I would say that our long-term care centers and senior living communities, they have really implemented and, and truly enhanced infection control and prevention measures um, during this pandemic. And, you know, I would echo a lot of what Crystal said, and I would probably say that one would want to ask themselves what care is required. Is the home safe? Is the family member not vaccinated? Because uh, there'll they'll be, um, you know, some, some areas where they'll need to understand what is required if you're not vaccinated uh, and you enter in one of those um, living environments. They may have to self-isolate or quarantine for a little bit. So really, you know, you'll want to weigh those risks and benefits and know that everyone's situation is going to be unique and absolutely don't be afraid to ask questions. That's good advice. And let's build on that a little bit more, Jesse. So if someone is talking or thinking about moving into a long term care facility or they have a loved one who is, what should they be thinking about infection control before the move? Yeah, another great question. I'd say, um, you know, vaccinations. <laughs> vaccinations sure. great, re greatly reduce the risk of contracting the virus. And really, they lead to fewer infection control recommendations for you and your loved ones. Perfect. A lot of people are thinking about sticking with in-home care instead of long-term care. Would you say one is safer than the other? You know, that's a really, really tough call. I'd say it depends on each individual's needs. And, you know, long-term care, while there's around-the-clock um, uh, around uh, services offered and assistance offered, um, you know, home care will, may also have less exposure to infections. Um, but at the same time, you're kind of weighing the pros and cons of that individual's needs. And really, depending on the individual's abilities and social interests and interactions, participation in the community, either setting really has its risks. So it's, it's really up to the individual and, and looking at those risks and benefits. For those folks who do opt to move into a long-term care facility, what can their friends and loved ones do to stay in touch, to make sure that they're still being social, even if there is an infection? Yeah, I, yeah, I love this question. So really, there's a lot that we can do. Uh, we can write letters. We can place phone calls. We can send notes or drawings, um, send games. Uh, I personally worked with an elementary school here in Lewistown, Montana, and coordinated with the elementary school teachers. And the children wrote letters and drew pictures. And we sent those throughout the entire state to many nursing homes. And that, you know, just just a little bit of effort or out of the out of the box thinking, creative thinking, and you can still keep in touch with your loved ones. And I'll tell you, they appreciate it. Yeah, I love that. What a great idea. So how about those people who are inside the nursing home? You know, there's a lot of fear that goes with COVID. How can they be safe and not live in fear every day? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent question. Um, good hand hygiene goes a long ways. And I, I believe Crystal might have mentioned that a time or two, but good hand hygiene. Wash your hands, cover your mouth. Um, you know, if you don't feel well, don't visit your loved ones. Um, don't uh, don't feel afraid to be tested for COVID-19. You know, the symptoms have changed quite a bit as the virus has come out with different variants. So if you're not feeling well, don't be afraid to be tested and, and that'll help reduce the spread of the virus too. But uh, again, good hand hygiene goes a long ways. Okay, great. That's awesome advice. And we have about a minute left. I want to jump to vaccine hesitancy really quickly. Can you talk about um, some of the vaccine hesitancy that you've seen in long-term care healthcare settings? Yeah, absolutely. So vaccine hesitancy, it's pretty interesting and, and dynamic in itself. We're seeing a lot of hesitancy around the speed of in which the vaccine was developed. And a lot of the misinformation that we see in the media or social media per se um, has created some hesitancy, unfortunately. So, um, you know, really being able to verify your information by a trusted source, um, that's kind of helped combat vaccine hesitancy, but it definitely we're continuing to see hesitancy and, and um, 
you know, we, we want to help people find the right information and then get that right information to the right people. Perfect. Thank you, Jesse. That's all the time we have. Again, we're up against another commercial break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about perhaps what the future of infection control in long-term care might be. We're going to predict the future right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. We're still talking with Jesse Kinsey and Crystal Morse from Mountain Pacific Quality Health. And Crystal, I'm going to go back to you again. And we're just going to talk about some of the um, most difficult challenges facilities had have had to navigate. We know they were just kind of in survival mode in the beginning and doing what they had to do. Um, how has that progressed over time? I think that's a wonderful uh, way to, to coin it, Beth, the survival mode, because we the uncertain was unknown and it was scary and still is. So, you know, before the pandemic, we were uh, scarce on a workforce shortage, which has uh, now heightened. Um, our turnover has, you know, also gotten uh, way worse. And then changing recommendations and having to adjust, like I talked about those federal rec recommendations and having to adjust to that, finding more workforce and, um, you know, keeping the facility up and running within regulations has been difficult. That's tough. Are they still facing those kind of challenges? Yes, although we do know more about the, the virus so and how it's transmitted, and then those infection prevention and control strategies to help prevent the spread. So we are um, heightening our certifications. We are, again, teaching uh, not just the healthcare workers in general, but we're involving the dietary folks, and involving the environmental services who are key uh, folks within these practices as well. And I know with all of these protocols and regulations in place, nursing homes are trying to figure out some semblance of normalcy. What do you think this will look like going forward as they continue to try to do that? Well, again, they're, they're making strides and they're gaining um, on their infection prevention and control practices. So as of October 2022, um, facilities have to have an identified part-time infection preventionist. So that's been a change that's coming. So again, I think I mentioned encouraging ongoing education and then uh, certifications within infection prevention and, and again, uh, kind of train the trainer, if you will, making sure that it's uh, filtered throughout the facility. What would you say are some of the biggest lessons long-term care facilities have learned in all this? Well, again, um, proper infection control measures to, to mitigate the infectious disease spread. So as I mentioned before, infection prevention is the responsibility of everyone. So this includes um, not only the healthcare staff, but the people that are coming and visiting, even the vendors that come in the building need to know proper infection prevention um, key uh, techniques in, within not only healthcare, but in everyday life. Let's give some credit where credit's due to these long-term care facilities. Crystal, what have they done really well with COVID-19 and dealing with the pandemic? Oh my gosh, they have done, it's, they've amazed me. Um, it, you know, these smaller communities, the, the more rural communities where I'm based, they really all came together and they shared PPE, they shared their vaccines and any needed supplies, they drove miles to deliver those to those in need. Wow, that's awesome. All right, Jesse, let's turn to you. Crystal touched on this a little bit, but can you talk to us about how uh, requirements have evolved at long-term care facilities over the course of the pandemic? Yes, thank goodness, have they. And, and, you know, like Crystal mentioned, the educational requirements, the training requirements, we're seeing that evolution before our eyes. Um, there's definitely been some regulatory requirements and guidance that's been updated. A lot of changes around infection con control. And, um, you know, early on we had some waivers in effect. Um, so kind of some, uh, uh, oh, let's see, um, rules that, that we could kind of scoop by. Those have been put back in place and somewhat returning to pre-pandemic requirements. But there's been a lot of updates, a lot of educational changes, and they're all great. Do you see more changes coming? Absolutely, 
Absolutely. You know, I, I think we, um, we're going to have to adapt and I think some are going to be um, harder and maybe easier than others, but I think we're going to see, um, you know, a different, um, different living spaces. I think we're going to see different staffing mandates. And you hear that being discussed in the shadows right now. Um, I think that our long-term care facilities are going to be more involved in the communities. But I foresee there's still going to be a lot of changes. You bet. Okay. And how about with visitors? Do you think they'll still have to do health checks, things like that? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. Okay. You know, our, our goal continues to be to protect our seniors, to protect our most vulnerable population that's that's residing in these communities. And I, I think that we'll probably resume or, or continue that screening process for a little while longer. Okay, thanks, Jesse. I'm going to jump back to Crystal really fast. Crystal, you know, we did what we thought was best for residents by isolating and shutting down the nursing homes, but those had some negative consequences with cognitive decline, depression. What can we do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Well, again, I think it's catching it at the source. So I know we've talked about, you know, checking those folks that are visiting, that um, checking staff. You know, we need to mitigate, mitigate any infectious disease at the source before it spreads. So like Jesse said, I really don't see that um, that initial checklist symptom going away anytime soon. You know, this like, you, it's including temperatures and um, asking if visitors are vaccinated. And then of course, uh, we've telehealth hasn't been mentioned. And so we've been using that to keep our, keep the long-term care residents safe for uh, routine checkups with their primary care doctors. Okay, great. We have less than 30 seconds left in one sentence. What do you make sure you want to make sure we hear today, Crystal? I want to make sure that you all hear me loud and clear that it's a, infection prevention and control is the responsibility of everyone. Perfect. Jesse, what would you add to that? I'll echo Crystal and say get vaccinated. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much to you both for being here today. Great information for us. Thank and thank you. you so much for being with us this morning. We hope you'll come back and see us again next week. Until then, stay fit, stay well, and stay healthy for life with Healthy Living for Life. Have a great week, everybody. Healthy Living for Life is brought to you by Mountain Pacific Quality Health in partnership with AARP Montana. We'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions for future programs, visit our website at mpqhf.org or call us at 406-443-4020. You can also catch us on YouTube by visiting our website and clicking on the Healthy Living for Life logo. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions.